Hey everybody, happy Saturday evening live tutorial stream. Hope everyone is doing well. Yay! Hi, Ferret Fawcett. Ferret got her package. Yay. That's super exciting. That Thanks. is awesome. Um, yay. I'm so glad you liked what was in it. That's fantastic. So welcome to the Saturday evening. I didn't write anything on the whiteboard. It's just a whiteboard. It's white. It's got nothing on it. How boring. You want me to write something on it? Nope, I can write. You, I don't know that you're going to fit back here because I have so That's many fair. boxes and trays of things in the streaming area. Like, mm -mm. But I'm not small. <laughs> well, it's not about you not being small, it's about this area not being normal sized, I think is the problem. But, welcome to the Saturday evening. Wow, my hair is completely falling down and asymmetrical. Welcome to the Saturday evening live tutorial stream. You tell me it doesn't matter if my hair is asymmetrical. I know, but down. that's because yours look good. looks good asymmetrical and mine just looks wonky. Um, anyway... <laughs> Welcome to the Saturday evening live tutorial stream. Guess what? It's the Christmas season at Beating Dreams. That means that Allison and Heather are um, are just you? towing the line of being completely out of our minds at this place. At this point, we've got another week to go of um, attempting to pretend to be sane individuals, and and then we can you know completely just unspool for you know. A whopping like two days and then we have to be back at work again um so so yeah well welcome to the beating dream stream during the christmas season it's awesome it's crazy um ferret does that mean that if we see you on a stream we're supposed to like cut you off like we're supposed to not let you buy anything um because that is a service that we offer like if you if you if you legit don't want to buy like we'll we will try and rein you in but you are definitely always welcome to hang out for the shenanigans whether you're buying or not and of course um, I posted absolutely nothing on social media today not a dang thing but we are doing a live merchandise sale um, at 730 we're gonna finish up the rando strandos for five bucks and we're gonna have some other fun goodies for you guys as well so right now we're gonna try and teach you something and what I'm teaching you is the hammered Geometric earrings. All right, hammer geometric earring. That is this evening's tutorial. Um, again, this is <laughs> that's true. Lori's really good at saving the rest of the stream. It's true from the purchases because. <laughs> Um, and Booty is also really good at saving the rest of the stream from the purchase. She is not feeling well today, so we probably will not see her tonight. Hmm. I know. That's a bummer. It is. Not that, I mean, we, we can live without her, but it's a bummer that she's not feeling well. Exactly. Also, it sucks to be feeling crummy during the holiday season. Like, the holiday season is crummy in so many other ways. Like, feeling bad during the holidays, I feel like it's, it's just, like, it's ultimately just a, shitty. An extra kick in the crotch. Yeah, exactly. So, um, much love. Whatever your crotch parts are. <laughs> much love um, going out to bootyliciousness and her, her feeling unwell today. But, hammer geometric earrings. They look like this. I will tell you. After almost two years of constantly generating content, 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 content isn't a word, it, it, it's like, it's like my brain took content and content and just like smooshed them together, but anyway, after almost two years of generating content, I'm almost out of clever names. <laughs> and some of you, I hear you laughing back there. <laughs> Are gonna I, say that I never I had clever names to begin with. I said nothing. <laughs> Ice me. Hello. Um, and 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 I'm yes, I'm totally shaking my little calm dawn bottle here because it's in front of me and I can't not shake it. Look how cool it is. Shake it, shake it. Like a Polaroid picture. Look how cool it is. <laughs> I'm so um, glad you like it. So anyway. Yeah, um, some people will say that I never had clever class names to begin with, and that's a, a debate for a different stream, but Those yeah. Those people are fired. It's... I disagree, folks, <laughs> <laughs> But, I mean, 
I, I was trying to find a tutorial for someone the other day and I just went back through, literally scrolled all the way back to the beginning and there is so much content out there. Holy guacamole. Um, and, and yeah, my brain's a little bit tired. So in January, we're going to do a little bit of recycling. Recycle, reduce, reuse. Recycle the tutorials we already have, reduce the stress on Allison's brain, reuse the clever names that I've already come up with. Um, the good news is that there's a whole lot of you um, amazing people out there who haven't been watching for the past two years, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw it all the way back to the beginning. Plus, there's a lot of those beginning tutorials. I promise I'll get to teaching something soon here. I just need to ramble for a minute. Um, there's a lot of those beginning tutorials that, that really need an upgrade. There's a lot of cat buttholes and, and things in, holes. In, in, in the early stages of, of pandemic beating dreams streaming that really could use an update. So hopefully these things will still be mostly new to most of you um, who have not necessarily been watching since the beginning beginning, but have been have been watching, you know, for a solid amount of time. So, so yeah, so we're going to try and redo some of those early tutorials without, um, without kitty buttholes and, and such, and that's going to start in the beginning of January. So January is going to be a whole month of, of recycled tutorials, but like I said, hopefully they'll be new to most of you. Um, but anyway, this is all to say that I realize that Hammer Geometric Earring is not really the most clever name anyone has ever come up with with for a class but you know what at this point it's, it's a cool class what i got and it, it is a cool, cool name it is a cool class show my earrings oh my earrings are really simple amy this was again this was a little bit struggle bus jewelry <laughs> for me today so so i i went with comfortable and easy also i have to say i have the most awesomest fun new shoes courtesy of heather Yay. They're super cute and super comfortable. Her loss is my gain. Yes. Cause yeah, these are awesome. Of course, am I going to be able to get my shoe back on while streaming? Of course not, because that's way more skills than I actually have. Well, then just don't need your shoe. Um, well, right, it's true. But now I've got one shoe on and one shoe off, and that feels kind of weird. I, I mean, Carol's not wrong. Yeah, uh, I think that, that's yeah, the way to go. I, I, yeah, or I could, you know, just woman up and lean on my theater training and, you know, the show must go on and all of that. Ah, no, computer, nobody wants you to be making noise. You're only making noise because we had a Zoom last night, but nobody wants to hear you. Am I? Nope. No? Okay. Nobody wants to hear the computer. Well, you told me. Um, okay, so Amy did want me to show my earrings, and then I will actually teach the project. So my earrings are actually um, threaders. So threaders are one of those things that not everybody really likes. So um, they were really, really, really popular um, a number of years ago, probably four or five years ago. Um, and this actually... I'm not dancing. <laughs> well, you're not on camera, so that's okay. Okay. Um, so this actually goes through your ear, and then this chain actually threads through your ear as well. And I just have a little um, Lennon Blue Topaz on the end of mine. And these are absolutely my um, go-to. They're my, they're my go-to, like, I don't want to feel like I'm wearing earrings, earrings. Um, and it's just the, the, the actual chain going through your ears is difficult for some people who have really sensitive ear holes. I don't, so the chain doesn't bother me, but the threader style is not great for everyone. Okay, so let's talk about tonight's project. All right, so hammered geometric earrings, and I did realize that I completely unintentionally made um, this evening's project look like a Christmas tree. I promise that wasn't intentional. As we all know, I'm anti-Christmas in all of its forms. So um, that was definitely not intentional, but hey, if you want to be holiday spirited, you could make your own and you could actually even call them Christmas tree earrings. But the main components of this evening's class, um, as far as supplies go, 
are you going to need see I like air I feel like arrowhead would have worked if I if I found a way to hang him this way Amy um this I'm just I'm stuck I'm stuck on a Christmas tree I saw it and I can't unsee it and it bothers me but there's nothing I can do about it so you're gonna need some 16 gauge wire that's gonna be for of course the the form of your earring which can literally be any shape that you want or right? it does not have to be shaped like an arrowhead or a Christmas tree I'm actually gonna make some today that are round that are some nice big hoops so you're gonna need some um, 16 or you could use 14 if you wanted to wire for that um, 16 gauge is a little easier to work with but really whatever you got lying around is all good you're going to need two components um, that are double-ended and these are the ones I used on my sample. These are double-ended components that actually were designed to be made um, into a necklace. So they've got the two loops kind of up at the top of the component. What I'm going to try to do today is I'm going to use these. And I'm actually, they don't match. I've got a citrine one and an amethyst one. And I'm just going to go make myself an asymmetrical pair of earrings with these. Because why not? An ASO pair of earrings. <laughs> That's not what I said. What? I mean, I'm, they might be ASO style. I, I don't know. I don't know either. Though I will say ASO that the, the X-Split Zoo, like the X-Split did you good last night on the Zoom call. Um, things that I discovered I and things that Heather also discovered when she got to sit on this side of, of the X-Split. <laughs> For the zoom call it's um you know having the production software it it definitely helps with with the appearances at least on my end also the 17 lights and you know all of that nonsense and i did not see a so really no heather got stuck on the other side of the screen because um zoom zoom doesn't maybe if i take you I think I have you in there somehow as a co-host. Like, yeah. if I if I take you out as a co-host, maybe Zoom won't be so grouchy with us. Although, my iPad was certainly being grouchy with me anyway. So. Well, that's fair. I, I could either have the choice of looking horrible, bloated, and disgusting, or Heather. not seeing everyone. To, though to be fair, her her Heather cam is at a much more flattering angle than her iPad was. That is not a lie. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so what I'm going to use today are these um, citrine and amethyst components. And yes, I am going to make an asymmetrical pair of earrings. Um, and so these are a little bit different. These don't have the loops up at the top. They've got them on the side. So they're they're designed to be the centerpiece of a bracelet. But we're going to go ahead and. Um, try and make them into earrings and once again I'm gonna try and make a pair of big ass Amy Anna B style hoops yes um, and then I am also going to show you all uh, they are for sale Megan they are these two are $34 each and these Labradorites were $12 each uh, da, 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 da. oh I'm also gonna show you how to make your own ear wires because um Hey, did y'all know that Christmas is a week from today? Because Christmas is a week from today. And let Why? me just tell you how horrifying that realization is for everybody in retail. Why? Including us. Why? Why? Uh-huh. Why? Because calendars. Because calendars are terrible. <sighs> so, there's a really good chance that you're going to be making a pair of earrings on Christmas Eve and you're not going to have any ear wires. So tonight I'm going to show you how to make your own. Also next week on the Beating Dream stream, I am going to be streaming Wednesday and Thursday as normal. Okay, so that's going to be Wednesday, 6 p.m. tutorial, 7.30 p.m. sales stream, Thursday noon stream, and 6 p.m. stream. I'm going to be focusing on holiday gift projects that you can make with things that you might have lying around the house. Okay, I'm not talking about like don't go raid your kitchen cutlery or anything, but like for those of us who who have 
stashes and hordes of shiny things and I'm pretty sure that's all eight of you who are watching me right now ooh, ooh, so yeah. yeah so so don't anyone tell me that you don't have a horde of shiny things because I'm not gonna believe you uh, I'm not so either. these are projects Lies. um next week that you'll probably be able to make with shiny things that you already have in your horde meaning that you don't have to um, go out get things order things wait for them to arrive etc. That's next week on the Beating Dream stream. So back to our um, hammer geometric earrings. As far as tools go, you're going to need your basics and then you're going to need a couple of specialty tools. So we're going to... Oh, Lori's just buying. Lori just thumbed her nose at us for being more organized than most of us. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, I feel like that probably came with a gesture and the Heather cam's not on, so I don't know what it was. I think you can hear it. <laughs> I know, but I feel like I need it for the highlights reel. And, and it's not there. I'm very sad. <laughs> if she keeps talking like that, I might be able to repeat it. <laughs> I will. So I started, I started looking through all of our clips. Um, and ASO did an awesome um, mock-up of our highlight reel as well. I will say there's a whole lot of Heather and I laughing. <laughs> like, there's going to be a lot of us laughing in the highlights reel because that's um, just what we do. Really, Amy? You have nothing left to work with at home? Do, do I need to, like, meet you somewhere and bring you some of your stash so that you have beads to work with? Yeah, that seems impossible. that's just sad. I also have nothing left to work with at home except for all the things that I already Oh, have. crap on what? baguettes. What? Um, can you just remind me that I still need to make my present for my book club exchange tomorrow? Oh, crap on baguettes. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I cut a bottle, I need to grind it down, and then I need to grab some twine okay. and take it home with me. Yeah, I had, so I had, I, I swear to God, I will get to, this is a fairly easy project, so we should still be done on time. I had crafting hubris last night, slash this morning, where, where I found a project on Pinterest, I was like, oh, I can do that, that's so easy, that's going to be amazing for my book club gift exchange on Sunday. And I'm going to start trying to do it on Friday night. Oh my god, I'm so proactive. Yeah. Three guesses how well that project went. I don't think it was hubris so much as... No, it was definitely... It was definitely... No, it was definitely hubris. Because I have a, I have a tendency to, to take the fact that I am adept in one crafting field and and then that sometimes I just think that makes me good at everything and it's completely untrue it is absolutely not factual at all and so so yeah so so cutting bottles is a thing that I love doing and I'm not very good at it yet but you did do that and well then, then you fell asleep no I didn't oh. Well, no. Oh, no, 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 no. So, so, okay, so the way that last night went, sorry, all nine of you, you're gonna just getting to hear a narrative about my life, and then I'll teach you how to make some earrings. So the way, the way last night went is Heather and I were here for the Zoom, and then we went home, and then I sat down on my bed to return a text message, and then I woke up at 1 a.m., and then I decided to go try my bottle cutting project for my gift exchange so I guess technically that was actually Saturday morning this morning not Friday night um it was still dark it's and nice. and I failed at it and so then I decided to put it aside and try it again this morning so then I took my trazodones and went back to sleep woke up at nine because I was up between like one and three thirty trying to do this bottle cutting project so took my trazodones, went to sleep, woke up at 9, tried my bottle cutting project again. It still didn't work except this morning I had a little bit more energy and decided to, to try and fudge it. Um, 
wherein I then exploded the bottom off of my bottle that I was trying to cut. Oh. And then That's at that point, too. I decided to change my plan. And, and now I have another cut bottle that's going to be a different type of thing that I need to do for tomorrow. So anyway, I'm sure everyone really didn't necessarily need that insight into the last 24 hours of my life. I did. But... <laughs> what were you wondering? About the last 24 hours of your life? Okay, fair. Yeah. So Carol wanted to know about the last 24 hours of my life, so Simple. now she knows. Yeah. And Heather did. So, okay. So now all of you who tuned into this stream to learn to make earrings, let's do that. So in addition to your round nose pliers, chain nose pliers, and wire cutters, I don't know that I actually got around to showing all of those on stream because I diverted into talking about exploding the bottom off of a whiskey bottle. So chain nose pliers. I mean, who doesn't do that? Wire cutters. That. Well, this is what happens when you're trying to cut a bottle and you get freaking impatient. So, round nose are for making loops, cutters obviously are for cutting, chain nose are for grabbing, holding, and squashing. In addition to these pliers, you're also going to need these or something similar. So this is called a bale making pliers, it's got these three different kind of larger barrels. Um, if you don't have a bale making pliers, you can totally substitute with just a marker or anything that, that's kind of like a, you know, three-eighths of an inch cylindrical object. And then you are also going to need, because hammered is in the title of the... Oh yeah, we totally did. Okay. When, why, why? Well, I just saw the note that had fallen down to remind me, mm -hmm. to remind you. Got it. Yeah. Yes, old lady glasses chain. That's okay. We still have plenty of time after Christmas. Yeah. Okay, good. Since hammered is in the name of the class, you are going to need a surface upon which to hammer. So I'm going to use my bench block, and then you are going to need a chasing hammer. I feel like this now it's going to fall down on me. Um, chasing hammer, if you don't have a chasing hammer, a household hammer will do just fine. So I'm going to take my wire. And I'm going to cut two pieces of wire. So again, I'm trying to make some big ass hoops because because my thought, okay, in my head, I know, right? Famous last words. In my head, the way that this looks is that this is pretty much a, a continuous hoop where this component piece at the bottom isn't really, you know, breaking the line of the hoop at all. So let's do a wee smidge of um, mathematics here. So let's figure on two inches as the diameter of our hoop, which is about a half an inch bigger than this component. Um, and so if we want to find out how many inches of wire we need for the circumference of our hoops, we are going to take pi and multiply it by the diameter we want. Um, and then I'm totally a, you know, half-assed mathematician, by which I mean I'm a no mathematician at all. So I just tend to round pi to 3.14. Don't hurt me, Carol May. And I'm going to multiply that by 2. That's going to be 6.28. So I'm going to cut, I'm just going to round up uh, for 6.5 inches per hoop. Because I need a little bit of extra for the actual loops that I'm making. So I'm cutting two six and a half inch pieces of wire. Now that is totally and completely an arbitrary number based on how big I think I want my hoops. And once again, they don't have to be hoops. They can be any shape you want. They can be, you know, this arrowhead shape. You can do squares. You could do lightning bolts if you're that ambitious. Like. I am totally, especially at this point in the holiday season, I do not have that amount of energy. But if you do, good on you. That's amazing. Um, I'm more in the, I want simple geometric shapes at this point, but whatever works for you is good. Like, just do what makes you happy. But when you're cutting your wire, you just need to make sure to cut yourself enough wire to accomplish whatever shape or size you are wanting to do. So I'm um, doing two six and a half inch pieces of wire. Hopefully that'll be enough 
to accomplish the size of hoops that I want. Now I'm going to take a form. And I could have used a bracelet mandrel, but, oh, actually, I'm a liar. I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use this. Okay, so this is my denatured alcohol bottle. Okay, this I think is going to be good. Um, I could use a bracelet mandrel. I could use, if I were at home, I could use a can of tomato paste, something that's, you know, a shampoo bottle, something that's skinny. You just need a round item around which to form your wire. And then I'm literally going to take my wire and form it around my round item. So I'm going to hold my wire down and just bend it around like so, so that I get my hoop shape. Now, as I've noted on previous Beating Dream streams, when you bend an object, or sorry, when you bend wire, excuse me, around an object, the wire is going to spring up bigger than the actual object. So this loop that I've made is a solid, you know, quarter of an inch in diameter bigger than the object around which I bent it. Now, in this instance, it's not super important because I'm going to be attaching it to my component. So I'm going to need some space in there anyway. But if you're trying to make a particular size, don't forget that whatever you bend it around should be slightly smaller than the size that you're going for. Once again, in this particular project, it doesn't matter, but sometimes it does. So it's just important to know about that property of the wire. So I'm going to take my second piece of wire and again, bend it around like so. Okay, so now I have my two big ass partial hoops. Okay, two big ass hooplets. I think hooplets is a good word. I think we should um, coin hooplets. Okay, Dolly is wearing Christmas pajamas, really? I'm sorry, Amy. I refuse to believe that unless you post a photo in Discord. Um, exactly. Heather just read my mind in the creepy way that she often does. <laughs> So yeah, picks in Discord or I refuse to believe you. Amy's phone and Discord don't get along, but she could send them you to You could send them us. to she could send them to either of us and we can, we post, can post them, them. in disc Discord. That, that's, that's different. That is different. <laughs> we can post them in Discord for her. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to take my hooplets and I'm just going to put them on my bench block. I'm going to take my chasing hammer. I'm going to use the flat side of my chasing hammer and I'm going to hammer this whole thing flat from end to end. I'm going to attempt to do this without bashing my fingers. It's Saturday so we're going to see how that goes for me and it's going to get loud for a minute on the Beating Dream stream so if you want to mute me now is a good time to do that. Um, though if you haven't muted me by now since I've just been rambling then I don't know apparently you like listening to me ramble or something weird but anyway hammering with my chasing hammer. So what I'm going for here is kind of a, a, a medium level of flattening. So I'm not trying to pancake this, like I'm not trying to make it as thin as possible, but I'm definitely trying to change the profile of my wire from round to flat. Now you can mute me again. It's a really good way to work out the frustrations. I, I was seriously this morning on the way to work thinking that I wanted to, you know, hit things. So this is a really good way to sublimate that, that desire for violence into something pretty. Mm. Mm, violence? You woke up and chose violence. Well, no, I woke up and thought about violence. And here we are. Okay, but to be fair, I chose this class last week. That's true. Okay, so now I've got two hammered hooplets. Okay, the, the hammering is cool for a number of reasons. Number one is it makes everything a lot sturdier. Okay, gives it your, um... Huh. 
It gives your wire a lot more sturdiness because the, the hammering actually stiffens the wire, strengthens it in place. Number two, it gives it a pretty look. Okay, I really, I'm a huge fan of the hammered look of the wire. I do want to make sure that these are the same size because they don't necessarily look like they are. Um, while I'm doing that, Megan had a question. Okay, could you take three to four strands of 24 gauge wire, twirl them around each other, and then use that instead of one strand to add texture to the hoop? Okay, so here's the problem with... I'm not going to say across the board that it wouldn't work, but here's the problem when you do that. It's exactly actually what we were talking about um, the other night where when you have two pieces of wire that cross over each other and you hammer them, what tends to happen is one wire wins and the other wire loses. So basically, when you've got two wires that cross over each other, one tends to stay firm and stable and the other one essentially gets a perforation, kind of like the and I'm dating myself here, but you know, kind of like the joints in Lincoln Logs, except for the fact that it's only one wire that has the, the Lincoln Log joint, and the other wire is completely whole. The problem there is that then that wire that has that little perforation or joint in it has a really huge tendency to break. So if you took three to four strands of 24 gauge wire, you twirled them together, and then you hammered them, you might wind up with a really cool ass earring, and you might wind up with a bunch of broken wires. And honestly, I don't know which one of those is actually gonna happen. So what I would do, were I gonna attempt that, were I gonna, you know, take that hypothesis to its conclusion, is I would do that with, with copper wire. I would do it with something cheap and see how it worked before I tried it on something more expensive, like, um, <laughs> thanks, Heather. Try it with something cheap before you try it with something expensive, like sterling silver or gold filled. But I didn't have Lincoln Logs. I didn't. <laughs> that was name brand. Okay, well I don't know if I actually had name brand Lincoln Logs, but that's what we called them. And I know how they went together. But I mean... I'm, I'm still pretty sure you had them because of your parents. Not because of you, necessarily. Because they knew about them. Oh yeah, no. I definitely had them because of my parents. I might have even had them because of my grandparents. Honestly, like I'm, I might, for all that I know, I might have had my, like my dad's set or my aunt Nancy's set of Lincoln Logs. <laughs> it depends on how old are Lincoln Logs. I don't know. Let's see. I'm pretty sure I had a hand-me-down set of Lincoln Logs. So how old they are is going to tell me whose hand-me-down set of Lincoln Logs I had, whether it was my dad's or my aunt's. Meanwhile. I'm going to continue on with these earrings. They were invented around 1916, so that's not going to narrow it down much. <laughs> okay, well, um, my, okay, so mine were actually wood. They weren't, um, they were not, there was no plastic in the Lincoln Logs set. I do remember that. So I'm guessing they had to have been, they were probably my aunt's because my aunt is way closer in age to me, obviously, than my father is, um, and and I feel like a lot of the things from my father's childhood went through him, and then they went through his brother, and then they went through the older of my two aunts, so by the time I was... My Lincoln Logs were wood as well. Okay, so Carol May's Lincoln Logs were also... Were your Lincoln Logs new when no. they were given to you, or were they hand-me-down? No, they were hand-me-down. From whom were yours handed down? I don't know what side of the family. Okay, so Carol May had... Since I have no siblings. Right, so Carol May had heirloom Lincoln Logs, and I think I had hand-me-down heirloom Lincoln Logs as well. I'm still going to go with there were probably my aunts, because a lot of the things from my dad's childhood did not survive to my childhood because, again, my dad, his younger brother, and then my Aunt Tammy, who's the older of my two aunts, and then my Aunt Nancy, you know, and then eight years after Nancy, then came me. So, a lot of the things of dad's, they, they just, you know, they didn't make it. Um, now, Asa had a good um, response to Megan's question was, which is, could you put 24 gauge wire around the hammered wire after hammering it? And the answer to that is absolutely. So if you wanted to add a little bit um, of texture 
to this you could definitely coil other wire on top of it you could coil 24 gauge wire 26 gauge wire um, absolutely on top of this and you could abs you could even coil wire with beads on top of it you know you, you can take and this is the thing that that I wish I need to do a week of, of tutorial mashups in the new year as well because we have a couple of fun tutorials where you got beads and wire going around a hoop that you could absolutely incorporate in this um, so I, I, I need to do a week of mashups of like take this tutorial plus this tutorial equals this tutorial so Heather wandered away but when she comes back I'll <laughs> remind her or I'll tell her to remind me about that but yeah because that's that is the thing that I really try to do with all these tutorials is is give you tools and skills that it's easy to combine and mix and match to make lots of different things and I realize that sometimes that's not always intuitive but you know that's always my goal okay so let's finish this pair of earrings though because I still got to make some ear wires and then they're to sale in you know 30 40 minutes so I have my big ass hoops again any shape that you want okay so if you want to make this arrowhead shape then make the arrowhead shape then hammer it um, you want to make a square, a rectangle, a lightning bolt, whatever. Make the shape, then hammer it, because hammering is going to basically lock your wire in shape, so you don't want to hammer it before you make the shape, because A, it's going to make it much harder, B, it's going to make it um, much more likely that your wire is going to break while you're trying to form it. So you definitely want to make your shape and then hammer it. Then I'm going to take my round nose pliers, and I'm just going to take each end of this, grab it, and roll it around to make a loop. I'm going to roll both of these loops to the same side of my big ass hoop. So I basically now have created a front and a back to my hoop. I'm going to do the same with my other hoop. And if there are any kind of wonkinesses with the shape, now's a good time to fix that. Okay, and then seriously, it is just this easy. I'm going to take my loop. I'm going to open it by pulling it out. All right, this is one of the only, there are, there are very few tutorials where I tell you to do this. But notice I, I opened this by pulling the loop out. I didn't twist it, okay? In this instance, it's just easier that way. And then we're going to close it back up. Make sure that it's as close as it can be. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Now, one thing in order to make this lay as nicely as possible, we want to make sure that there's a little bit of tension on this joint here. Right now, there's really not. Right now, if I put this together, it's going to kind of lay wonky. So what I want to do... Good night. Good night. Wait, what does your shirt say? What does my what? Your shirt say? Oh, uh, I can't remember. Love them always. Love them anyway. Love them anyway. Love it. Oh, who that? Dolly in Christmas pajamas. Oh my God. She looks very brown in that photo. I know. Okay, hold on. Can you, like, did you post to Discord? Did I just... posted to Discord. Okay, Dolly in Christmas Pajamas is officially on Discord. Yes. And is officially slaying with the adorableness. So, anyway, what I want to do to make sure that there's tension on that joint so I get a nice hoop look is I just want to pull this out a bit. And then, I already opened that, so I'm just going to pop that on there and see how much nicer and cleaner of a circle that makes. Carol May, you got the thing for Linda, right? Yeah. Thank you. Um, and then I'm going to close that. Megan's asking what gauge are the, what gauge wire are the hoops made out of? I'm just going to squeeze that closed. Again, you want to make sure that that is completely closed. And <clears throat> 
uh, I made the hoops out of 16 gauge wire. Now the only reason that I used could use 16 gauge wire is because these hoops are not going through my ear. I'm actually going to use an ear wire for them. If you're making hoops that are actually going to go through your ear, 16 is way too thick. But these are um, these are 16 gauge hoops. Okay, so there is one. I'm going to do the same with my other component. So again, open one of these up, drop that component on. Again, we made a front and a back. Obviously, the you know the pretty part of the component it goes to the front. The not so pretty part of the component goes to the back. Hi, Corvus. Right? They are some solid '90s, '80s hoops. Did we get rated or anything? No. We got we got some more people now. I know. Hi, people. Nice to see you. Welcome to the Beating Dream stream. Also, I totally look like a dork um, when I was looking at the viewer count just then. But welcome, um, all of y'all viewers who just dropped into the stream. We are so happy to have you here. We are um, doing. Yes, we are. So I'm making a pair of big ass hoop earrings today. Um, same technique as these. Excuse me. Um, same technique as these, so basically geometric hammered earrings is what I named this class, same technique, you can use it basically using any shape you want. Uh, so yeah, so we're finishing our second earring um, as far as the actual earring part and then I'm going to make some ear wires. So, and hi Talitha, I don't think I said hi to you. I tried, but it came out not as tally cut, so I had to go back and see. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> okay, so then again, what's gonna make this have a nice looking corvus? I feel like you could wear this one with the amethyst actually as a pendant um, as well instead of an earring. So again, what's gonna make this have a nice circular shape is tension on this joint here, which means what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull this out a little bit so that when I attach this to here, there is a little bit of tension and that is going to make for, and I just had to, just had to bend that a little bit to pop it in and then close it. And there you go, that's hoop number two. So these are my two big ass hoops. And now of course I need some way to get these big ass hoops onto my ears. How am I gonna do that? Heather doesn't know. Yes you do. You're gonna make ear wires. I'm gonna make ear wires, exactly. Good guess. It's like you did this for a living. <laughs> Something like that. So I'm gonna make just a basic pair of ear wires and again, with the holiday season here, like it, it ain't just coming up, like no, the holiday season is here, like it is the train that is bearing down upon you and you know, you're fucked is, is pretty much what's going on at this point. Like if you haven't sourced all of your supplies and everything, even your local bead shop may not be able to help you for two reasons. Number one, supply chain issues, things like um, gold filled crimp covers are back ordered from every supplier that I have. Number two, it's been two years of pandemic and you know, uh, there's not a lot of money for ordering supplies. So it's nice to be able to, <laughs> Heather has a feeling I'm going to be swearing a lot tonight. I don't I know, have no idea I don't I don't know why that. she thinks that except for the fact that, um, it's the week before Christmas and I've definitely lost my gift of shit. Uh, it's not a swear rule, Megan, but it's the, it's the rule in the drinking game where if I swear before 9 o'clock everybody drinks. I think um, Heather is concerned for everybody's livers, including our own. Uh -huh. So anyway, um, I have no idea. I lost my other train of thought. Whatever it was, it's gone now. Oh, right. It's good to be able to know how to make shit, okay? It's, it's really good to know how to make something from nothing when nothing is all you have. Water poison. Oh dear. Ace is concerned he's going to get water poisoning. I, I don't, I don't know what to do for what, how does one, I mean, we, we, we could 
shove you in the dehydrator. Like, I don't even know how to fix water poisoning. Oh my gosh. There, I'm, I'm sure there's, there's something wittier I could have said there, but I don't know what it is. All right, for my ear wires, I've got 20 gauge, just regular 20 gauge round gold filled wire, okay? Most of your commercial ear wires are made with, hi, even more people, nice to see you. Um, most of your commercial ear wires that you purchase are made with 21 gauge wire. Um, I don't carry 21 gauge wire. Most feed stores don't carry the odd gauges of wire. We only carry the evens. So if you're gonna make ear wires, 20 gauge is usually the way to go. I'm gonna cut two pieces of 20 gauge ear wire, ear wire, two pieces of 20 gauge round wire, and I'm gonna cut them at two and a quarter inches each. So two, 2.25 inch pieces of 20 gauge round gold filled wire. Seriously, knowing how to make your own ear wires is a lifesaver. Um, the one tool you're also going to need, in addition to what I said at the beginning of the broadcast, if you're making ear wires, is you're going to need a file, sandpaper, or emery board. Doesn't matter which one of those three you use. You just need one of those to knock the edges off of your ear wires so that they don't lacerate your ears as you're pushing them through. You're going to take your round nose pliers. You're going to go to the end of your wire, and you're just going to turn a small loop. The only requirement here is your loop's got to be big enough to accommodate your wire on your earring. This is dead soft, Megan. You could also use half hard for this. If you're making a small pair of ear wires like this, it usually doesn't matter whether you use dead soft or half hard because the actual act of making the ear wire hardens the wire to the point where it's hard enough that it's not going to deform when it goes in your ear. Um, and then after you have made your loop, you're going to grab either your bail making pliers or your dowel, your marker, whatever you're using. We're just going to go ahead and line that up right next to our loop. And then we're going to bend that over just like so. And there we go. That's our ear wire shape. Um, interestingly enough, if you're trying to make shift a class in the middle of the night before Christmas, you can do exactly the same thing. Do it with a heavier wire, like an 18 or a 16, make it a little bit shorter, and wham, bam, that's a hook clasp right there. So again, knowing how to make a basic hook out of wire is for the procrastinators among us. Not that I'm tarring anyone else with that brush, but I'm fairly certain there are a couple of you out there on the stream right now. For the procrastinators among us, knowing how to make a hook out of wire is a hugely useful skill. Um, and I started off, Megan, with two and a quarter inches of 20 gauge wire for that ear wire. Um, I'm going to do the same on my other wire. Take my round nose. Roll a loop. And then, um, so if you don't have a bail making pliers, literally a marker will absolutely work. So it's a little bit more difficult just because you have to hold it there, but you're just going to hold it right next to that loop nice and firmly and then roll it over. So you don't even have to have, and I think those are even, yeah, those are pretty much exactly the same size. So you don't have to have a bail making pliers. Now if you're making a crap ton of ear wires, bail making pliers make it easier, but you, you can totally use found objects. I mean, really at this time of year or any time of year. Whatever you can get your hands on that works, like, you go. All right, now I'm going to take my file, and the end of this right now is very, very scratchy. It's very, very uncomfortable. Um, it's not going to be very fun to go through my ear, so I'm just going to take my file, and I'm going to file it down. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to blunt and round the end of this wire. Okay, so you just want to take it and... work a little bit more on it than that. Alright, you just want to take it and make it so that you can run your finger against it and it doesn't feel painful. It doesn't feel like it's going to hurt you. So 
All right, and last thing I usually do with my ear wires, um, and this is just an aesthetic thing on my part, is I'll take my chain nose pliers, grab the end of my wire, and I just like to kick it out a little bit. Now, if you feel like this is a little too long here, you could always trim that off a bit. Um, typically with an ear wire, you don't want to get, obviously, too close to this loop here, but it doesn't have to be quite this long. I could lose probably about a quarter of an inch of that if I needed to or if I felt like I wanted to. Kick that out. And then the very last step is to put these on my earrings. So I'm gonna open my loop that I made on my ear wire. I'm just gonna twist that out. I'm gonna drop my big ass hoop on there and I'm going to close it up. When I close it up, I wanna make sure that there's no air space in there. I'm gonna use earring number one and I'm gonna do the same thing with earring number two. And there we go. That's it. That's our geometric hammered big ass earrings. I'm very excited about these. These are going to be really fun. I know. I super love them too, Amy. So thank you all so much for hanging out with us on the Beading Dreams um, Saturday evening tutorial stream. I'm Allison from Beading Dreams in Dallas, Texas. We are an actual brick and mortar retail bead store. We're here on Lover's Lane in Dallas um, with custom made jewelry handmade jewelry, beads, beading supplies, and gift certificates for anybody who needs a last minute Christmas gift. And um, of course, if you're not local in Dallas, you can find us on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beading dream. Um, five times a week for complimentary tutorials. We typically stream Wednesday through Saturday at 6 p.m. Central Time plus Thursdays at noon and live merchandise sales every Wednesday and Saturday at 7.30 p.m. So tonight is Saturday. That means we will be back in approximately 30 minutes with the live merchandise sale. It's going to be probably about 7.45. Um, we'll be finishing up our rando strandos. We got some 8 inch strands that we didn't get to the other night that we're going to show you all and some other fun stuff as well. If you're not going to join us for the sale, don't forget you can find us back on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beating dream next week, Wednesday and Thursday only, okay? I'm taking off Christmas Eve, I'm taking off Christmas Day, all right? I will not be streaming on either of these days, but we will be focusing next week on projects that you can make with things you might have in your stash already. So we will be streaming Wednesday at 6 with a live merchandise sale at 7.30 plus Thursday at noon and 6 p.m. So thank you so much for hanging out with us for our geometric hammered earrings. Very happy with how these turned out. And we will see you all back on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beating dream in just half an hour for our live merchandise sale. If you're going to join us for the sale, don't forget to make yourself a cocktail. We will be doing our shaker and spoon Grand Gimlet. I will be mixing that on stream at the beginning of our sales stream this evening. Um, so make yourself a cocktail, um, get yourself a snack and some hydration, get comfy, get cozy, and get ready for some retail therapy in the comfort of your living room, office, or wherever you typically watch the Beating Dream stream. So we will see you all in half an hour. Thank you all so much. I'm throwing things. Oops. All right. We'll see you soon. Bye.